This is a Yamaha AG03 mini mixer USB sound card type thing. And I've taken it apart because I got one and I'm curious as to what's inside it. Let's save a quick rundown for all the audio files out there. Uh, the sound chip is a Sirius Logic CS4270, not particularly impressive. The headphone amp is an AMAX9820. Difficult to find out because the chip is not labeled well. Uh, there are some GSC062 op amps for like seemingly general purpose applications. Those are not very good. And for the audio stuff, they are using uh, GSC 2068Ds. The D class is a bit better than the normal 2068. They're just fine. They're a better 4558. Uh, overall, uh, nothing in this thing is uh, really uh, bottlenecking the 4270. It's, it's, it's well designed. It's performing uh, as you would expect it to. Uh, so the 4270 is mounted there. I think these are a bunch of the 062 op amps and down here among the potentiometers we have most of the 2068. So I'm not too concerned with any of that uh, because it's uh, frankly working just fine. Uh, build quality wise it's uh, very well assembled. Uh, soldering quality is good. There are some hand soldered things which look excellent. Uh, they are using very high quality components. Uh, the uh, capacitors for coupling are for the most part those uh, go golden uh, Nichicon capacitors, uh, which are just fine for the application. The rest are also Japanese uh, brand name uh, capacitors. They're even using a PS series uh, for you know, some sort of power filtering there, which is a very high quality capacitor, very long life. I use those in industrial stuff myself. That's uh, very nice. Furtive. Oh, that's going to be for a phantom power thing. Uh, overall, not a bad device at all. I uh, do like it. Uh, however, it does have a bit of a design issue uh, because I use this to drive headphones through the uh, headphone uh, jack there where you can just plug a headset in. And uh, I was expecting it to be a pretty good headphone output, which it is, but it's got a 120 ohm output impedance, which I don't quite like. I was surprised to find that out. I was expecting something like 32 ohms. And I wanted it to be lower because this is driving my headphones. I wanted it to be better than like the vintage receivers that I've always used, which also have over 100 ohms output impedance. So that's uh, why I've done some reverse and reverse engineering of this. So if we have a bit of a closer look, uh, the uh, headphones uh, are driven through these 120 ohm resistors there, uh, and in turn they're driven by this uh, Max, uh, what was it called, 9820 uh, headphone drive IC. That's a, sp a specialized uh, headphone amplifier IC, uh, like you'd see in a smartphone, or, well, not smartphone, but uh, some nice uh, portable media player type thing. It's a very competent chip. Uh, good specs all around. Uh, it should be able to perform pretty much transparently from the uh, CS4270 uh, chip. Uh, I don't mind at all, they've splurged on that. Uh, but I think we're going to have to modify this circuit a bit in order to actually get it uh, to perform well uh, with, uh, if we just uh, remove these. Uh, uh, resistors for the low output impedance. Now, uh, just removing the resistors is probably going to work. If we just bridge over those, uh, our headphone impedance is going to drop down to basically zero, and we're going to be happy. But what I noticed while using this thing is that I've always had uh, the headphone output set to basically nothing, uh, and I'm using 32 m headphones. Uh, so if I'm to reduce the head, uh, headphone output impedance, which is currently dropping my output power by a lot, I'm just going to be sitting at no volume at all, and I'm never going to turn it up past like that, and that's going to be super annoying. So we need to modify this uh, to ha also have a lower gain on the headphone output, which is uh, a good thing uh, because you get a bit less noise as well uh, when you do that. And uh, that's uh, not going to be particularly difficult to do because this thing is basically just a power op amp. So, for gain resistors, 
uh, for this uh, headphone amplifier is uh, this guy here, uh, which is right by this capacitor, which is, seems to be just a high, high, uh, a high frequency filter of some sort. I think it's it's in parallel with that, so it's allowing high high frequencies to pass. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, that's the gain resistors for resistor for one of the channels, and the one for the other channel is on the other side of the board. Let's see where we are. It would be. Uh, where are we? I think yeah. The gain resistor for the other channel is going to be that one, uh, and they are 47k rated. Uh, so I think I'm gonna lower do those to like 10k. Yeah, I think I'm gonna drop those down to 10k to give me about one quarter of a gain, uh, and uh, just bridge over the 120 ohm uh, output resistors. Where are we? Those guys there. And uh, we'll see what happens. Let's see if it sounds good, see if it performs well. And hopefully this is going to be a decent little headphone amp as well. All right, and uh, there you have one of the gain resistor modifications. Right there, we've replaced uh, the uh, original 47K resistor with uh, an 11K, just because I had lots of those. Now we've done the same thing on the other side of the board. Uh, right there, you can see I've put new resistor on. And the 120 ohm uh, series resistors there for the headphones have been jumpered. So, uh, I've got not enough hands to do this on camera, but we'll give it a go. Uh, this goes on like. And we have a USB cord. This PC should have the right drivers installed. Let's see where the fire comes out. Uh, Well, that's not looking happy. Okay, we'll figure that issue out. Can you perhaps spot what did it? <laughs> so it turns out uh, the, uh, the CPU module at the bottom actually doesn't have any ground uh, aside from the case. Uh, so if we disconnect this thing, it's just gonna start oscillating and breaking apart again. Uh, and I found that out after undoing all the modifications uh, and uh, the issue is still remaining. Uh, but I've redone the modifications and uh, we're playing it right now and uh, it's sounding reasonably good. Uh, there's some noise and distortion because the ground is completely fucked like this, but if we just yeah, do like that, you can hear that there's, there's audio coming out of it. So it uh, seems to get a bit funky uh, when you go really low. Uh, on the uh, gain resistors there. Uh, I would imagine it's because it's got the high frequency uh, bypass cap across it and the lower value of the resistor, uh, the less that capacitor gets to do its job, uh, which uh, might make it a bit uh, oscillating and noisy and terrible. Uh, so I settled for 16K uh, gain resistors uh, and that seems to be working just fine. I can't, it, it's obviously noisy uh, when it's like out of its case, even with the original resistors. So, I don't think we're seeing any performance degradation because of a modification. I think we're seeing it because it's just uh, a mess right now. Uh, but it does work. We have lower gain. Uh, I did actually try with one uh, channel with 47k, another with 24k, I believe. And uh, I verified that these indeed are adjusting the gain of the amplifier, that I'm not just placeboing myself into a corner. Uh, and it works exactly as I thought it would. So that's good. Uh, so really at this point it's just a question of uh, putting this thing back together enough to uh, give it a wee go on distortion meter uh, to see if it's uh, actually going to perform uh, well at all or if uh, there's some quirk in this circuit uh, that's just going to make bridging these guys impossible. Uh, maybe we'll have to put some like 
tenome eight bit resistors in there or something to smooth it out a bit. It's going to be better than 120 20 ohms in uh, no matter what, that's for sure. All right, and uh, quite a bit of experimenting later, we have this. Uh, it seems the circuit doesn't quite like having a pure uh, pass through zero ohm uh, eight bit impedance. It just seems to want to start to oscillate and uh, make noises and behave badly. Uh, so I've uh, swapped out my jumpers for two 4.7 ohm resistors. So we're going to have like marginally less than that. Uh, eight bit impedance still a lot better than 120 ohms, but uh, I think uh, real zero ohm eight bit impedance on this thing is a bit of a pipe dream. Uh, I've also taken some more steps to modify the a gain structure of the amplifier because uh, it really got uh, way too much gain uh, with the original uh, divider resistors installed. So I uh, actually did something I was trying to avoid but found myself unable to avoid. And that is to swap out the uh, 247k uh, uh, input uh, gain resistors for 120k. Uh, and that's uh, cutting our gain down to like, uh, I don't know, I didn't even do the math. Math done. And uh, it seems that uh, this new configuration is putting this amplifier into a gain of about 0.13, uh, as opposed to being unit gain. That's a gain of one, uh, as it was from a factor. So we've cut the gain in 10. We've removed a lot of gain from this amplifier uh, in order to make up for the fact that we are uh, having a lot more gain uh, due to our lower 8-bit impedance because driving 32-ohm headphones, as I am, uh, the 120-ohm uh, resistors, uh, they, give, they reduce your gain by a factor of about 5. So 4 fifths of your 8-bit uh, power is being dissipated in these and only 1 fifth in your headphones. Uh, so by re reducing this resistance, we're getting a lot more gain actually out of a headphone socket uh, with our headphones connected. Uh, and I think I'm going to leave it at here. I don't think we're going we might be able to like edge a couple more ohms out of this thing. Uh, but 4.7 ohms, that's fine. I, I don't think we're going to see uh, much improvements from improvement of the damping factor even lower than that on this thing and since it seems to want to misbehave on really low output impedances I think this is a safe bet. I'll test listen to this, it seems to sound fine so uh, we'll just uh, make a little jig to hook this up to the uh, distortion analyzer and uh, we'll see if it actually performs well or if I'm hearing something terrible and uh, telling myself it sounds good because uh, I've been putting work into it. Okay, I, <laughs> I think we've pretty much been beating a dead horse here uh, because this thing is uh, frankly performing terrible. And um, now I didn't measure it beforehand on the headphone output, but uh, I'm not sure this is actually my doing. Uh, the levels are a bit weird. Uh, that might be my doing, but for distortion, I don't think so. Uh, so we're putting out uh, roughly as much as it can put out at a kilohertz right now. And uh, that would be, we're at a 0.3 volts full scale. That's about 0.2 volts. Uh, any more than that, and it starts clipping. We're loading this down with uh, 33 ohms here. Uh, so it really doesn't put out a lot of voltage. It's uh, certainly loud enough into 32 ohm headphones. I uh, couldn't ask for more. It's too loud for me by far. Uh, so that's not a problem. But the distortion, we're on 0.1% uh, full scale. Uh, you can see it's sitting at like 0 0.03 something percent, 0 0.038 or something. That's just not good. Uh, now I think this interface really doesn't perform much better than that actually in general. I, I don't remember, I think this has actually quite poor uh, monitor out performance but it's low noise enough. Uh, the one thing that uh, isn't an issue is the noise floor. If we just uh, uh, stop playing the playing sounds for it, uh, 
it really isn't uh, particularly noisy even at uh, and of course it's noisy now why is it oh we're measuring distortion not noise so if we give it a moment to set it's basically going to go right to the bottom of a the scale there except it's not right have to remember to disconnect this coat because it adds just a tiny bit of noise there we go uh we, we've got like basically no noise this is completely fine I don't remember what the scale is for this thing, but it's it's it is just a couple of microvolts. We're at uh, 0 0.001 volts per division, and we are uh, 0 0.001 volts uh, full scale. And we're at uh, just about one division value. Do the maths. I'm happy with that. It's completely inaudible. Uh, so I've also got a frequency sweep here. This is uh, 20 to 20. So if we disengage the filter there, go to input level, uh, we can see that uh, it, it does have a decently flat frequency response. So we're sweeping uh, 20 to 20, and the blip is going to be when it starts over. So as it's starting over, it's down like 0.2 dB going up, and it's pretty much flat and down like maybe 0.1 at uh, 20k. Uh, not not terribly good by any stretch of your imagination. I'm doing this at uh, uh, 44.1 kilohertz, by the way, so you know you might have want to expect some roll off. Uh, but still, the distortion performance is just <laughs> just abysmal. The 8-bit level is abysmal. Uh, this thing is just not terribly good, not terribly good at all. That said, I'm going to keep using it because it's uh, it's good enough. It's just not. Uh, it's just not just this entire endeavor was completely pointless. I no. Don't do this modification. It's <laughs> it's not worth it. It's legitimately not worth it. Any distortion uh, decrease you get from the lower eight bit impedance is gonna be. It's it, uh, it, this thing has a lot of distortion on its own. Jeez. So in conclusion, what can you say? Uh, trust the engineers at Yamaha to do a decent job making a budget uh, USB mixer. This thing was absolutely fine uh, before I touched it. It's still absolutely fine after I touched it, but it's probably got more weirdness in it now. But oh well, having weirdness is nice sometimes. So learn from my mistakes. Don't try to modify this. Cheerio.